Poimandres appears. Once, when I began to think about the things that are, and my thoughts soared exceedingly high, and my bodily senses were held down by sleep like people weighed down by overeating and weariness, I thought I saw a being of vast and boundless magnitude coming toward me, who called me by my name and said, What do you wish to hear and see, to learn and know? Who are you, I said. I am Poimandres, he said, the mind of absolute power. I know what you want, and I am with you everywhere. I want to learn about the things that are, their nature, and to know God, I replied. How I want to hear. He said, keep in mind that you wish to learn, and I will teach you. The Vision of Creation With these words, he changed his form, and in a flash everything opened before me, and I saw an unbounded vista. All was light, a soothing and happy light, and as I gazed, I was entranced. But soon a stark and terrifying darkness descended gradually like a coiled snake, and I saw the darkness turn into a watery substance, unspeakably agitated, giving off smoke as from fire, emitting an indescribable sound of lamentation, and after After that, an inarticulate cry like the voice of fire. Out of the light, a holy word descended upon the watery substance, and I thought this word the voice of light, and unmingled fire leapt out of the watery substance and soared upward. The fire was quick and violent, and the air, being light, followed the breath as it rose from earth and water to the fire, so that the breath seemed suspended from the fire. But the earth and water remained intermingled, and the earth could not be seen apart from the water. All these elements were kept audibly in motion by the breath of the word hovering above them. Poimandres is light and mind. Then Poimandres asked me, Do you understand what that vision means? I will understand, I said. I am that light, he said. And I am the mind, the first God, who existed before the watery substance appeared out of the darkness. And the luminous word that issued from the mind is the Son of God. In what way? Understand that what sees and hears inside you is the word of the Lord, its Son, but the mind is God, the Father. And they are not divided one from the other, for they are united by life. Thank you, I said, but think about the light and understand it. Where everything comes from. Having said this, he gazed intently at me for a long time, and I trembled at his aspect. When I raised my head, I saw in my mind the light, consisting of innumerable powers, which had become a limitless cosmos, and the fire, contained by a mighty power, was held in place. This is what I saw and understood from the words of Poimandres. I was amazed, and he spoke to me again. You have seen in your mind the archetypal form, infinite and prior to the beginning. But where do the elements of nature come from, I asked, from God's will, which received the word and saw and imitated the beautiful world. The watery substance of nature received the word and made itself into an orderly world from its diverse elements, and a brood of living creatures came forth. Another Mind, the Demiurge And 
the first mind, being both male and female, both life and light, can see through the word another mind, the demiurge, and this second mind of fire and breath fashioned seven rulers who encompass within their orbits the world perceived by the senses. Their government is called destiny. Suddenly, the word of God leapt out of downward moving elements of nature to the pure body of heaven and was united with the mind of the demiurge. For the word was of one substance with the mind, and the lower elements of nature were left wordless, that is, without reason, and became mere matter. Now the demiurge mind worked together with the word to encompass the spheres of the rulers and to whirl them with thunderous speed, with no fixed beginning or determined end, since their revolutions begin where they end. And according to the mind's will, the lower elements of nature became animals devoid of reason, for they did not have the word, and the air brought forth winged creatures, and the water brought forth fish, and by then earth and water were separated from each other according to the will of the mind, and earth brought forth four-footed creatures, and creeping things, and wild and tame beasts. Mind Father of all gives birth to a primal human. But mind, the father of all, who is life and light, gave birth to a human being like himself, and he loved him as his own child, for he was very beautiful, bearing the likeness of his father. And God was very pleased with his own beauty in the primal person and delivered to him all that he had created. And the primal person took station in the highest sphere of heaven and observed things made by its author, his brother the Demiurge, who ruled over the region of fire. Now that the human had seen those things made in fire, he wished to create things of his own, and his father permitted him to do so. And since the rulers loved him too, each gave him a share of his own nature. When the human learned their characteristics, he wished to break through the bounding orbits of the rulers and to share the power of him who rules over the fire. The human descends into the world of nature. Then the primal person who possessed all authority over the world of mortal creatures and irrational animals, leaned down through the harmony and, having broken the vault, showed lower nature the beautiful form of God. When nature saw the beautiful form of God, it smiled on the human with love, for it had seen the wondrous beauty of the human reflected in the water and its shadow on the earth. And the human, too, on seeing this form, a form similar to his own reflected in the water, loved it and wanted to live in it. And his wish was immediately realized, and he began to inhabit a form devoid of reason. And nature received its loved one, embraced him, and they mingled, for they were lovers." Humankind is mortal and immortal. And this is why the human of all creatures on the earth is twofold, mortal in his body, but immortal through the eternal human. Though he is immortal and has power over all things, he also suffers mortality since he is subject to destiny. Though above the world of the spheres, he is a slave of destiny. Though he is male and female, 
being born of a father who contains male and female and is sleepless as his father is sleepless, he is vanished by love and oblivion. Seven earthly humans are born. And after this I said, O mind, tell me the rest. I too love your teaching. And Poimandres answered, Here is the mystery that has been hidden until this day. Nature, intimately mingled with the primal person, produced a most wondrous miracle. The human had in himself the world of spheres of the seven rulers, which, as I told you, was made of fire and air. Nature immediately made seven humans corresponding to the natures of the seven rulers, and they were androgynous and sublime. These seven humans were born as follows. Nature brought forth their bodies. Earth was the female element, water the generative male element. From fire came their nature, from ether their spirit. Nature brought forth their bodies in human likeness, and humankind, which was formed of life and light, became soul and mind, soul from life and mind from light, and all creatures in the world of senses remained that way until the end of an era. Male and female are created. All living creatures, being androgynous, were suddenly divided into two, and the primal person became at once male and female. God immediately spoke a holy word, Increase and multiply all you creatures and creations, and let humankind, being with a mind, recognize itself as immortal and know that the cause of death is eros. And when God said this, his providence, by means of destiny and the world of spheres, brought male and female into union and established generations. And all creatures multiplied according to their kind, and whoever recognized himself attain that good that is supreme, while whoever was led astray by desire, by love for the body, will wander in the darkness of the world of senses and suffer death. The soul ascends through eight zones and becomes divine. Mind, you have instructed me well in all things, but tell me more about the ascent. How shall I come to life? At this, Poimandre said, First, with the dissolution of your material body, you yield your character to the demon. Your image vanishes, the bodily senses return to their own sources, becoming part of the cosmos, and, combined in new ways, do other work, and anger and desire enter thoughtless nature. And then man rises into the harmony, the world of the spheres. Then stripped naked by the force of the harmony, he enters the eighth sphere of the fixed stars. And possessing his own energy, he remains there with others, singing hymns to the Father. And the others are happy at his coming, resembling those who live there. He hears the powers who have their place in the substance of the eighth sphere and who sing to God with a special voice. They move in order up to the Father, they surrender to the powers and become the powers and are in God. This is the good, the aim of those who have gnosis, to become God.